After years of peaceful existence on the distant planet Valoria, Questar and his people were forced into battle. The power of their step crystal ripped a hole in the fabric of time, sending them backward to prehistoric Earth. Unaware that at the same moment the evil Emperor Krulos was plotting to capture the step crystal with his own grotesque Rulon forces. And so the battle continues in a new place in time with Dino Riders. All right, well, thanks again for coming out. I am Dr. Jason Lyle, a speaker and research scientist with Answers in Genesis. And I want to talk to you today about dinosaurs and the Bible. And I have to admit that this is a really fun talk for me because I've always loved dinosaurs since I was a little kid. And we find that most kids really get excited about dinosaurs. Now, a lot of people actually equate dinosaurs with evolution because our culture has used dinosaurs in an attempt to get people to believe in millions of years of evolution. But what I want to show you today is that when you start from the Bible, Dinosaurs make a lot of sense, and in fact, we can actually use dinosaurs to get people excited about the Bible really being the Word of God and really giving us the true account of history. And I found that this is just a great way to evangelize, especially to youngsters who get interested in God's Word through science, really. Now, a lot of the times when I do these talks on creation, one of the questions that I get asked is, how do you fit dinosaurs into the Bible? And my answer to that question, how do you fit dinosaurs into the Bible, is actually you don't. Because when people are asking, how do you fit dinosaurs into the Bible, they're really asking, how do I fit what I know about dinosaurs into the Bible? How can I make it fit? How can I interpret God's Word to allow for dinosaurs? You see, that's the wrong direction, isn't it? We don't want to start with what we know to be true, what we think we know to be true, and fit that back into God's Word. Not at all. We want to start with the Word of God. We're going to use the Bible to explain dinosaurs. We start with the Bible. That's the, that's the premise. That's the way to start. You see, we all have a way of looking at evidence. We can either look at the world through evolutionized glasses, millions of years of slow, gradual processes, or we can look at it through what God has said about the world. We can look at it through the lens of Scripture. And how we look at the evidence will be affected by our views of the past. If we think that the world evolved slowly over millions of years, that's what we're going to tend to see in the same way that a person wearing red glasses sees red everywhere. It's not that the world is red, it's that that's what they see because they're wearing those glasses. Well, if we think in terms of millions of years of slow, gradual processes, that's how we're going to interpret the data. So put on your biblical reality glasses and let's see what we can conclude about dinosaurs starting from Scripture. Well, dinosaurs, dinosaurs they're land animals by definition. They're reptiles that walked on their legs. Therefore, they were created on day 6 of the creation week. And we know that from Genesis 1, 24, and 25. Starting from Scripture, we know that the land animals, all the land animals, that would include the dinosaurs, were made on day six. And this is a very basic form of logic called a syllogism. Follow this. T-Rex is a land animal. Land animals and man were created on day six. Therefore, T-Rex was created on day six. That's pretty easy, isn't it? And so dinosaurs, therefore, are not millions of years old. They lived beside man, contrary to what we've been taught. Dinosaurs lived with people. So maybe it looked something like this. But... Uh, <laughs> In any case, people say, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You, got, you got a T-Rex in the Garden of Eden. Wouldn't that T-Rex try to eat Adam and Eve? I mean, I've seen Jurassic Park, and they look pretty mean. See, a lot of people get their ideas about how animals behaved, surprisingly, from Hollywood fiction, which I find rather sad, really. People think that God made these horrible monsters because they see, they see Hollywood fiction. But if you think about it, is Hollywood really trying to tell an accurate story, or is it trying to tell an entertaining story? That's really what it's trying to do, isn't it? And if you think about it, if dinosaurs had survived until today, but instead the elephant had gone extinct, I suspect we might go to Jurassic Park and sit down and watch the movie, and we would see elephants in it. Because if we didn't know how elephants behaved, they might have been perceived as monsters. And you'd see, people, you'd see these elephants rushing around, stabbing people with their tusks and crushing them with their trunk. And so dinosaurs are the same way. They're not monsters. They're just animals that God created. You can't tell the behavior 
of an animal by its bones anyway, any more than you could tell the behavior of me from my bones. You could make a guess, but it's just a guess. It's all it is. We know from Scripture that God wouldn't make monsters because the world was a paradise when it was first created. Dinosaurs aren't monsters. They're just animals, animals that God created. And in any case, we know that those fossils can't be millions of years old because death entered the world after Adam sinned. So those dinosaur fossils that we find had to have been after Adam sinned. So they were definitely in the world at the time of Adam. There's no doubt about it. Made on day six, lived with people, not monsters. People say, oh, those, those fossils are millions of years old. But again, fossils don't come with little labels telling you how old they are. Not at all. Is there any scientific evidence that dinosaurs have lived recently and not millions of years ago? Well, there is. Did you know that we found evidence of dinosaur red blood cells up in Montana? Red blood cells from a T-Rex. And, and more recently, we found evidence of soft tissue in a T-Rex, again, up in Montana. Really But what do dinosaurs eat? <laughs> so we've got a T-Rex here. What's he thinking about? Is he thinking about eating animals? Let's put it like this. What did the first Tyrannosaurus Rex eat? He had teeth up to six inches long, serrated fangs. What did he eat? Well, was he a plant eater, a meat eater, a scavenger, a plant and a meat eater? How many say plant eater? Okay, how many say meat eater? How many say scavenger? How many say plant and meat eater? Okay. We got, a, we got a pretty good group here. The, uh, the correct answer is that he was a plant eater because we know that from Scripture. How do we know that? Genesis 1, 29 and 30. He would, the, original, the first T-Rex would have eaten plants. <laughs> Dinosaurs, including the T-Rex, originally ate plants. By the way, they couldn't have eaten meat because when you eat meat, you're eating a dead thing. I hate to break it to you, but you are eating a dead thing. And there was no death before Adam's sin. So, of course, they would have eaten plants originally. Now, at some point, some of the dinosaurs might have started eating meat, but that would have been after sin. Anyway, originally they would have eaten plants. Dinosaurs were originally vegetarian, as were all animals, according to Scripture. It's an implicit teaching of Scripture. So the first T-Rex is thinking about plants. People say, well, wait a minute. T-Rex has those incredibly sharp teeth. And indeed, T-Rex had six-inch serrated fangs, perfectly designed for ripping and tearing into cantaloupes and watermelons and all kinds of plants. You see, some plants require sharp teeth anyway. Have you ever thought about what it would be like to bite into a coconut? Have <laughs> you thought about that? See, we need something like a knife, something like a sharp tooth to cut it open to get to the soft stuff on the inside. But if you think about it, there are some plants that require sharp teeth to eat. And there are lots of animals today that have sharp teeth that eat only or primarily plants. Look at this primate. Look at those teeth. Oh, but that guy got picked on in school. Look at that. <laughs> My goodness. You know, he eats primarily plants. Here's a skull. Look at the sharp teeth on that skull. What do you think this animal ate? Well, I'll give, you, I'll give you a clue. This is the skull of a fruit bat. What do you think a fruit bat eats? Fruit. How about that? You see how easy it is being a creationist? It's not hard. Now, again, at some point after sin, some of the animals must have started eating meat because some of them eat meat today. So at some point after sin, they would have converted. But if you think about it, even today, some animals go back to their pre-fall diet. Did you know that? We have an example of a lion, little tyke, which is a 350-pound female lion who would not eat meat. Beautiful animal, but she refused to eat meat. They would try to give her meat, but she doesn't want it. But she does like milk. <laughs> kind of fascinating, isn't it? <laughs> Well, why don't we find the word dinosaur in the Bible? It's a question I get a lot, but there's a very easy answer for that. The word dinosaur is a modern word. It was invented in 1841, coined by Richard Owen, who was a creationist, by the way, whereas the King James Version of the Bible was translated in 1611. The word dinosaur did not exist when the King James Bible was translated, so of course you're not going to find the word dinosaur in the Bible. But you will find the word dragon in the King James Bible. Now it needs a name. How about... 
Trogdors, the Burninator. Oh, yeah. Check out all his majesty.